do do do. We're still on it, aren't we? We're still on it. We are champions again. Ole ole. Double champions Monday morning. Wake up. Coffee. Wake up with the lark on a Sunday. I tell you, what a fantastic time to be a Celtic fan. As always. As always. And and then it was good to see on Twitter some of them are from the other side of the city. I'm fucking fed up with us, man. I'm actually a pure fed up with us. Um, good. Good. Because they rubbed it down our throats in the 1990s. And they did. They rubbed it down our throats in the 1990s. This period of Celtic dominance. This period of Celtic dominance is karma. Is karma for me. Um, when I think back to the 1990s, um, I worked in a, a factory in Kirkcaldy, a linoleum factory that had been around for about 150 years. And that's true. Um, the, the company had been on the go for 150 years. It was absolutely laden with huns. It was a terrible place to work. The abuse that I got at work, the shite that they used to write on the walls in the warehouses and stuff, it was an awful place. It was awful. And if you went and moaned to the, your supervisor, fucking he was a hunty. They rammed it down my throat in the 90s. This is karma for you bitches, Matt Kirkcaldy. Get it right up, yous. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Rio Hitati and Paolo Bernardo. We're going to be talking about Greg Taylor and also be looking at some of the Celtic headlines around the door. Um, sliding door moment, Carter Vickers return from injury at Fur Park was the spark that set Celtic on the road to sealing the league and cup double. The defenders' comeback on the 25th of February turned out to be one of the most significant moments of the Celtic's camp. Pain. Now, you remember that um, back in December, the one and only Gustav Lagerbelke was getting ready to leave Celtic. I uh, wonder if he'll leave Celtic this summer. Um, he, he probably will, but we'll let, we'll let them have their holidays first before Brendan sits down with them. You know, Brendan never stops working, so um, although he will be probably, yeah, he might even be in Spain just now um, at his holiday home that he hasn't seen much of this year. So he'll be getting his tan topped up, he'll be enjoying himself, and he'll probably have a few meetings with people on the island of Mallorca over the summer period, considering they had one with the one and only Callum McGregor. If we remember, last summer he had a three-hour lunch with Callum McGregor. I wonder if conversations like that will happen this summer um, away from Celtic Park in the prying eyes of the board and everybody else um, so that the manager can just get on with business and that's what I like about Brendan he just gets on with it he gets the job done he's a safe pair of hands isn't he uh, but anyway um, if you remember back to the December the big man Cameron Carter Vickers did get injured which uh, was a sad moment for Gustav because he was then brought back to Celtic and he was never used and I feel sorry for him. I do. I really feel sorry for him. He had the chance to go and play football and the, the, the Italian team wanted him. Um, Celtic turned it down. Celtic, <laughs> will Celtic bring out a double, a double winning DVD? <laughs> Celtic do like a DVD. And there's nothing better than bringing out a DVD, especially when it comes to, uh, with a cup double, uh, a league and cup double, when you beat your, your, well, they're not our biggest rivals because they're not really our oldest rivals, are they? They're only been around since 2012 poor little suds anyway as the curtain closes on another football season we will be here all summer we don't do walking away we aren't um we are full-time youtubers on this channel we are not um whatever anybody else is let's be fair and uh, you know what you get on this channel it does what it says in the tin as it says and uh, due to the exciting summer that's ahead and i say that in a football term There'll be an exciting time when Celtic will make some announcements, hopefully before the um, the players get back to pre-season. But they're also the Euros, so we might do some stuff with the Euros also uh, on the channel. If not, we'll put it on another channel and then we'll just do the Celtic news on here and the Euros on another channel. I think that might be probably the best, safest bet. But then I don't know. I'm not too sure. Tell me in the comments. Anyway, the fact that Adam Ida was the man of the moment on... Saturday, sparking absolutely amazing scenes. Um, mates that were at the game, they, they was they were like it was one of it was one of the worst games to be at for a long time, but it ended the way that Celtic usually end at Hamden, and uh, recently anyway, in recent term. The ball that was passed through to the one and only Adam Ida came from a player that. Hasn't been really first choice. 
He is on loan from Benfica, a bit like what Jota was. And Celtic have the option to buy. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about Rio Hitati versus Paulo Bernardo. Because I think Paulo Bernardo did more. Personally, that's my own personal thoughts. I think Paulo Bernardo did more when he came on than Rio Hitati did most of the game. Now, I know Rio Hitati does things in the background and he, he makes tackles at the right time. But when you look at chasing back, and I've been saying this for a while about Rio Hitati. I mean, Rio Hitati is a fantastic player, but he's not been at the races all season, has he? Um, we can look back to the very beginning of the season when he was displaced by the one and only David Turnbull. Now, when you're displaced by David Turnbull, um, do you know it's a pretty... <laughs> Yeah, oh, you must be you must be in a bad time if you're replaced by David Turnbull. Is he slower than a than a than a week in the jail? So you might say, and big up to the Barlini boys if you're listening today. Anyway, Rio Tati isn't the fastest in chasing back, but Paolo Bernardo grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. He really grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck when he came on, and he did make that difference. And he set up the goal, and it took a bit of it took a bit of cojones to to go from the midfield area. Um, like he did. I mean, there was a, there was a, you could have, you could have said it. Paolo could have went down for the foul just over the halfway line when that tackle came in. He could have went down and he would have got a foul. Um, but he didn't. He didn't. He, he, he kept his feet. He kept on his feet as hard as it was. And then he, he ran up the pitch and then he took that shot. He had only one thing in his mind is take that shot, take that shot. And it, you could see him laser focused. So after he jumped over the Rangers player, up, two Rangers players then back off from him, and you could say it's poor defending the Rangers, but Paolo Bernardo had one thing and one thing only on his mind, to take a shot from distance. And the big Adam Ida could read that. He knew what he was going to do. So Adam Ida knew what he had to do. He had to follow up in case the goalkeeper, Jack Butland, spilled the ball. And he did. A big Adam either says that they practiced this in training. They did do this in training. They said it was something they worked on. And that's just normal football stuff. You do work on, on that kind of stuff. But the fact that, for me, he achieved more than what Rio Hitati did the whole game. There's been several games now for during this season, towards the end of the running. That I just don't think Rio hitati has been at top form. And I don't think he has all, all summer. And then people will say, well, he doesn't like, he hasn't liked it since Ange Postacoglu left. Well, he's a professional. He's a professional football player. And if we go into work and we don't like the boss, you still got to get on with it. I've got to like the boss because it's mother half. <laughs> and uh, I've, got to love, I've got to like her. It doesn't matter. It's, it's part of the parcel. But... Jokes aside, when Rio Hitati hasn't been performing at his best this season, Brendan Rodgers has stuck by him. Is he the man to take us into Europe next season? Or should Celtic now cash in on the player? Should Celtic cash in on the player this summer? You've got a couple of choices. Celtic will have advancements for Matt O'Reilly. Clubs down south will look, will look at it and say, is Matt O'Reilly really a £30 million player? £25, £30 million player. It's understood that Celtic weren't £30 million before they'll go to the table and even open talks with anybody. Um, will they Will they sell... And then we all know what's going to happen. They're probably going to sell Matt O'Reilly because they'll go for the big bucks. But I'm thinking for Celtic going forward and Brendan Rodgers saying that he wants to build for Europe. Brendan Rodgers has turned around and said that he doesn't... Celtic don't need to sell any players. From a financial point of view, we do we are in a good position. We do not need to sell players. So my thinking behind it is Rio Hitati's been here a little bit longer than Matt O'Reilly. We all know that Celtic players have a bit of a shelf life, foreign ones. So we like to cash in on them. Is it time to cash in on Rio Hitati? Um, will he get top dollar for him? Will he get that kind of money? No, he won't. But we would make a return on our investment. So my thinking behind it is, is sell Rio Tati and buy Paolo Bernardo. And we know Paolo Bernardo's still got room for improvement. He is a young player, um, but it falls within the, param the, the parameters of what the Celtic business model is. Now, we're all, we're all on the other side is we're all sitting thinking, no, let's go out and buy someone better. Where are we going to get someone better for between... 
five and six million. Let's be perfectly honest here, because um, we know that the parameters that Brendan Rodgers has to work under, we know that the club needs to strengthen. Brendan Rodgers has told the media that the club needs to strengthen. He, he's told the board what he wants to happen. Now, it'll be interesting because the last time that Brendan was here, the board basically didn't listen to Brendan, did they really? Um, when you come down to the, the whole Niall McGinn situation, uh, the John McGinn situation, um, that was that was the beginning of the end of the Brendan era. Now, it's not going to be the beginning of the end this summer. Uh, that will not happen. Brendan will be here for the three seasons. So before you start, Brendan doesn't do walking away. Not like the Rangers. He's here for the three years. Maybe here for more than three years, but we'll see. And he'll definitely be here for three years. I think he'll be here for the three years and he'll, he'll have the conversations with the board. And at that point, he'll say it's time to hand over the reins to someone else. Um, because he would have had a good crack at the Champions League and a couple of runs in Europe. And he'll know himself that at that point, and the reason I'm saying this, and in, in, in about three years' time, he's still going to be young enough to get a job, another job down in England. And I think in three years' time, a couple of the big teams will be looking for managers again. Um, there seems to go, there, there's a three year cycle down south, and I think we're in the midst of that three year cycle just now. Um, and there's going to be a quite a few changes down south. So when Brendan knows his stuff, and, and two years' time, there'll be that change again. So he'll be able to walk into a job back down south quite easily um, at the end of the season. He won't do walking away before then. But should we sell Rio Hitati? This is the question that I'm putting out to all you Celtic fans today. Should we sell Rio Hitati to buy Paolo Bernardo? Even though we have the money in the bank and we can go and buy Paolo Bernardo anyway. Or should we keep both players? Celtic model is that we will probably sell one or two players. There will be players on the, the periphery of the squad that will be sold this summer. And it will be adios to them or wherever they go to. Um, but it's going to be an interesting, interesting summer to say the least. But my thoughts are... I would probably sell Rio Hitati. Being perfectly honest, it's my own personal opinion. It's called the One Celtic Fans View, so you can have your view in the comments section. That's why it's called the One Celtic Fans View, because we all get a view on the channel. Anyway, how are you feeling this bank holiday? I know it's a bank holiday back home. It's not here, but um, I am getting ready to go to the airport to pick up the Mrs. Brother, who is flown over, flying over just now. Um, so, yeah. And that's that. That's what today's video. I'm not sure if it's going to be alive tonight. Just keep on checking the channel. Uh, I will put up a co good couple of hours before. <laughs> if I can get a live, it would need to be 9 o'clock, uh, which is 8 o'clock back home. So, yeah, it'll still be around about 8 o'clock at night um, going forward. Bear with me this week. It is going to be a difficult week. I, I am going to be back up and down to the hospital every day. Um, and it's looking like that she's going to be in at least till Friday. So... Um, bear with me this week, the, the videos will still go out in the morning, um, as soon as everything is really 100% back to normal and she's back home with me, um, we will be back doing with the 8pm lies every evening, we don't do walking away have a fantastic day Celtic fans, tell me in the comments what do you think, do you think we should sell Rio or are we just going to sell Matt O'Reilly and we're going to keep Rio and then buy Paolo Bernardo, and Paolo Bernardo is going to be the replacement for Matt O'Reilly now that's a question Anyway, you know what's going to happen. It's Celtic. Anyway, have a fantastic day to all you Celtic fans all around the world.